right, it's just a couple of minutes after three, and um, we'll go ahead and get started. I think more people will be joining, but we like to stay on time with this seminar. And so I'm really happy to welcome our speaker today, Dr. Philippe Mundianda Mutsa. There he is. And um, I, I know Philippe from when he was working on his PhD and he's um, become uh, an expert with fish. And I know that he's very interested in continuing his research and mentoring um, early career and student researchers. So we're, today we're really happy to hear about his PhD research. And um, I just want to remind people that um, this is our weekly Center of Excellence in Biodiversity and Natural Resource Management seminar. And uh, we have this every Wednesday at three to four. So I encourage um, any of you that would want to give a talk um, you're welcome to contact Vena. He is um, here in the group now. He organizes the seminars. And we welcome talks from completed research, but also from uh, research ideas or concepts that you have. And also, if you're giving a conference talk, it's a great place to give a practice talk. So um, you're welcome to put your questions into the chat. Um, and at the end, we'll also... Um, open it up if you want to unmute and talk directly to Philippe. And uh, my uh, Vana and Zibaza will be moderating the question answer session. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Philippe, and welcome. And thank you once again for um, agreeing to give us a talk today. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. Uh, it's a, a pleasure for me to be with you, uh, all members of uh, the Center for Excellence of Biodiversity and Conservation at University of Rwanda. So here you are with uh, Philippe Munyandamutsa. Uh, I'm going to talk about species specificity and uh, sexual dimorphism in tooth shape among the free St. Patrick Aprocumine species in Lake Kivu. This is one of my topic for my PhD, but this was also the most important topic because uh, I have to, show, to demonstrate that uh, I identified properly the Aprocumine fish species that uh, I was working on. Um, So in Lake Kivu, we have uh, 15 endemic aprocomine fish species. Those uh, aprocomines uh, are very morphological similar. Here I have uh, tried to show you only the head of uh, 15 aprocomine fish species we have uh, in Lake Kivu. Uh, you will see that some of them we can identify uh, very easily, but others, it is very difficult. The first one that we can identify very easily is uh, Aprocomis vitatus, the first one. And uh, I show you its dentition, how it looks like. The second one is uh, Aprocomis adolfi frederic. Uh, you have to make a dissection and look at inside this is pharyngeal bone. Uh, you see how it looks like. The third one is the Aprocomis gracilio. Uh, the other one is the Aprocomis groweri. Then you have uh, Aprocomis astatodon and the uh, Aprocomis paukidens. This paukidens has uh, a mouth always open when you cross it in the harvest, you will see its mouth is always open. There is another black one, very black, that we call a procomis nigroides. There is another one, a procomis kamianzovu, and um, a procomis uh, ocritidens, 
this is very easy to identify because of um, a concavity above the eye. There is also a Procomis olivasus. This is also easy to identify due to its color. It has a yellow color. There is also another one easy to identify is the Aprocomis crebridens. This is very abundant in a, a pelagic zone, but we found it also in a, in a literal zone. There is another one also that we call Aprocomis microchrysomelas, microchrysomelas. But we have also another one that we call a Aprocomis crebridens. So all of them, the 15, uh, you will see that they have uh, almost the, the head profile is uh, the same, but it will not be difficult for someone who is not acquainted for identification to identify a Procomis uh, uh, vitatus and the Procomis uh, uh, kamianzovu. It's a, a elongated uh, fish. Uh, with a, a longer codopedonco, uh, uh, also uh, aprocomis ocutidens and uh, aprocomis crebridens. Those are four that we can identify very easily. Others are morphologically similar. Then we have to look at the mouth and see the shape of uh, the teeth. So what is the problem in Lake Kivu aprocomine fish identification. Most of them are morphological similar. The method used by Joss Mooks that we will see very soon, he used a morphometrics a method. This is a linear measurements and um, meristic data. It's uh, about counting some anatomical structure. And uh, we look at the frequency, how this uh, the variable will appear. But this, this method uh, appeared to not be efficient to show the, distinctive, the distinctiveness of the Lake Kivu aprocomine fish species. Because when we compute the principal component analysis plot, they will show too much of overlap. So for me uh, to, to tackle on this study, and it show that I have uh, identified properly my species of study, I preferred to, uh, to look at the teeth and uh, not saying only that uh, the, the this qualitative description, but uh, I had also to, to use some analysis to show that quantitatively, the tooth shape is a, a good tool, taxonomic tool uh, to identify Aprocomine species of Lake Kivu. So the tooth shape was important for our study because it's often used as a taxonomic tool in vertebrates. So it means I can use it for all animals having the spine cord. It's just going and take the teeth, then I will analyze only the teeth, the shape of the teeth then I can be able to classify, to do taxonomy of those animals. Uh, this was done for Hulok species in China. Uh, you see, we have uh, this kind of uh, animals, even in, here in Rwanda. Uh, the same study uh, of um, omonid molars uh, could also show a classification of these uh, animals in different groups according to the shape of the teeth. Also, uh, within the genus Pongo, uh, the, this was also helpful to classify uh, Pongo uh, animals. The tooth shape is important structure. Why? Because it is controlled genetically. This uh, tooth shape is determined by very few genes. So there is, if they, they are determined by very few genes, so there is a possibility to split even very uh, closely related species. 
This tooth shape is also involved in feeding mechanisms. It frequently reflects the type of food a species has become adapted to consume. It often uh, under selection, especially during adaptive radiation. As uh, fishes like cichlids will be moving from one place to another and uh, then meet other type of food uh, and get other morphology in time. So there will be also a shift of trophic uh, ecology. So this uh, tooth shape will become very important, not only in uh, fish taxonomy, but also we can explain some morphology using ecology. The tooth shape has also been used to detect differences among species. For example, among Lake Victoria secrets, having unicuspid and obliquely trunked ones of the most distinct, this was the most distinctive feature to identify aprocomis obliquidens. The tooth shape also can be used uh, to show variation within uh, individuals of the same species. Uh, that is what we could uh, see in Lake Kivu. Within the same species, for example, Aprocomis camianzovo uh, or NCDA, that in pelagic and in litro, they have some differences, some variation uh, on teeth, on tooth morphology. However, the prices a characterization of the species specific differences in the aprocomine of Lake Kivu uh, sometimes remains ambiguous, especially in the identification of uh, aprocomis astatodon and uh, aprocomis incidae and aprocomis uh, camianzovo. So, just to say, the three species uh, are, are very difficult to identify. Even for previous uh, researchers, the name Aprocomis Encidae in, 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 in Greek means uh, the fell. They, they were missing, uh, they were failing to identify properly this uh, Aprocomis Encidae because it has a dentition that is very similar to the one of uh, Aprocomis Kamiazovo and the one group of uh, uh, of uh, uh, Aprocomis Kamianzovu has a teeth shape that is similar to Aprocomis astatodon. So uh, there will be some confusion. So in this scenario, the use of outlines combined with the elliptic Fourier analysis uh, would show a clear differences in tooth shape between Aprocomis uh, astatodon, uh, Kamianzovu, and NCDAE. In another study, tooth shape was linked to sexual differences. Aprocomis Flavio Josephi, for example, the adult males have conical teeth, while females, they have uh, bicuspid teeth. The environmental condition have also been hypothesized to drive evolution of numerous teeth morphology. So considering local variation in niche traits within the lake environment morphology of a specimen from heterogeneous local habitat might, uh, 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 co which combine with trophic uh, variation. For example, fish from pelagic and littoral habitat in Lake uh, Kivuanda represent two distinct environment in Lake Kivu, a little substrate comprises a submerged rock, macrophyte, rock sandy, and mixed habitats, where the plankton are very low comparatively to pelagic zone. For example, in pelagic zone, we have the plankton, like copepods, cladocera, and there are also rotifa. Just to say, uh, the two environment, Lito and Pelagic in Lake Kivu, are totally different. So if I study the tooth shape, 
in this different uh, different environment, what will happen? So we have to explain this in this uh, study. Studying two size variation of the Aprocoman species offers an opportunity to explore the relationship between crown size and habitat gradient from the pelagic and little Aprocomine SDA and Aprocomine Kananzovu and Aprocomine um, Astatodon. And he has is a taxonomically reliable tray among secrets. We also examine the hypothesis that tooth size vary among Aprocomine SDA and Aprocomis Kamianzovu. Specifically, we examine whether Aprocomis Astatodon, Aprocomis SDA, and Aprocomis Kamianzovu be identified using tooth shape and whether tooth size, height, and width can be another tool to aid in diagnostic of the free species. We also tested for tooth shape uh, differences between sexes, habitat, and region of uh, regarding height and width of the free uh, species. So Lake Kivu is uh, our study area. Uh, the Lake Kivu, as represented here, was uh, subdivided in two uh, uh, regions, the southern region and the northern region. And we subdivide also the lake in two habitats, the little zone the and the this uh, dot, red dot, represents the little zone. The triangle represents the pelagic zone. So we collected uh, this uh, specimen from uh, Nyamasheke. Uh, the Nyamasheke, you see there are uh, three point dots. But uh, to the other side, uh, like uh, Rusizi, uh, Homo, we did not see the NCDA. We took about three years uh, searching for NCDA here. We did not, uh, we were not able to get it. So these are specimens uh, that were, these are species that we were collecting, Aprocomis kamianzovu and Aprocomis uh, NCDA. Uh, as you can see, they are very morphological similar. Probably uh, you can see that uh, Aprocomis kamianzovu is a bit uh, elongated and um, the body depth is uh, smaller comparatively to the NCDA. Uh, here also the codopedonco is uh, a bit elongated comparatively to the one of four NCDA. But when you look at uh, uh, Aprocomis astatodon, it has a body depth which is a bit high uh, comparatively to others. And the codopedonco also is uh, shorter. So, but we did not uh, get this uh, specimen, this uh, species during uh, our sampling uh, uh, campaigns in three years. We, uh, we borrowed this uh, specimen uh, at the Museum of Terrifilene in the laboratory of Prof. Joss Mox. Uh, Aprocomine samples were collected during the dry season from June to September in 2016 to 2018. Aprocoman species we investigated are very rare. For example, Aprocomis NCDAI and Aprocomis Kamenazovo contribute to 0.01% and 16.62% uh, percentage of the total fish catches of the Lake Kivu, respectively. So to get um, a representative number of fish samples for our statistical analysis. We had to, to fish this, uh, to search for this uh, species uh, three times a day, uh, in morning, 
uh, late morning and in the afternoon, but in the literal zone. And these are periods of intense activity for this uh, specimen species. When they come to search for uh, food, it's the time where we go to search for them and uh, to capture them. This uh, sampling was done the first day of the month, only in literal zone. Uh, but uh, for the pelagic, uh, we had to, to follow the Limitrusa, Limitrusa Meodon fishermen at night when they are allowed to operate. So uh, that's how we could get um, this uh, uh, species in the pelagic zone only at night because uh, only these uh, people, uh, the fishermen of Limitrusa Meodon, can be allowed to go there at night. Uh, we did not catch uh, a Procomis astatodon specimen in our three years of fish sampling campaign. And uh, we have borrowed specimen for Royal Museum for Central Africa. The fish were identified under a binocular microscope uh, following the quantitative and qualitative characteristics as defined by Snooks in his thesis in 94. Specimen were given an ID number indicating the, spe the species name, the sex, and the location. Immediately after identification, the fish uh, uh, at, the, at the capture site, uh, we injected the formalin uh, in the fish in the esophagus. Thereafter, the whole fish was submerged in a formalin solution of 5%. Fish remain there in that solution for two weeks in the etiology uh, laboratory of uh, the technology complex of, at uh, the University of Rwanda. After two weeks, fishes were washed overnight with running water, then transferred uh, to alcohol solution, 30%, 6%, then 70% as recommended by Wanik White. After that, uh, they were cleared and stained according to the uh, Pothoff and Taylor protocol. How did we get uh, this uh, PIF then? If you can see here, we have um, the, the jaw with a teeth. You will see to the media part of the premaxillary a arrow here uh, that show three teeth. These teeth were chosen because uh, they are the one that you, we use to identify the, the species. And uh, again, these uh, teeth were not damaged, they were normal. And then and they maintained the shape train that facilitated species identification. So there was a, a consistent shape that facilitated as identification. But the at the interior part, we have also the same uh, type of teeth, but sometimes they were damaged. With, uh, probably we can they lose uh, the cone. So. Uh, but here at the media part, uh, they were consistently showing uh, the tooth shape uh, that can be used for identification. The dentaries and premaxillary were dissected, stained uh, using uh, uh, some solutions. Teeth were labeled with uh, the same ID as the fish from which they were from. The extraction of a complete tooth was done under a lumpus microscope. All extracted teeth were given the same ID as that of the fish sample. So we worked with uh, 405 teeth of Aprocomis camionzovo, astatodon, and SD for cusp height and width measurements. Among them, only 83 teeth were randomly selected 
for outline and elliptic Fourier analysis. Um, so when we take uh, uh, the, we take uh, uh, the picture of this uh, teeth, then we we arrange in Microsoft PowerPoint to get only the crown, as you can see here. This is a crown of uh, Apochromis camerazovo, but this is uh, the crown of uh, Apochromis ncidae. Then uh, once uh, you you work with it in Microsoft PowerPoint. This is to optimize a correct edge detection. Uh, the images will be saved in JPEG format. Then will be converted in, into full color bitmap beep, format. For further, they will be uploaded in shape uh, software package for outline analysis. So, but we have to take uh, some precaution. Uh, the tooth, Corn was cut at the buzz, at its buzz, but uh, this line should be horizontal. It uh, means following this axe, uh, the long axe of uh, major cusp, it will be perpendicular. Huh? If not, the, the software cannot run. The minor, cusp, the minor cusp was always positioned at the right side. Uh, you see, uh, this is a minor cusp. This is also the minor cusp. They will be always to the uh, left side, to the right side, sorry. They will be always to the right side, the minor cusp, you see it, okay? The cut edge was uh, horizontal. This line should be uh, show that uh, there are, it is perpendicular to this axis or for the measure cusp. It will be horizontal. If you do not respect this, uh, the software cannot run. Uh, this allowed the teeth to be positioned consistently flat on the surface for a standardized imaging. So when running this software, it will request you the number of harmonic. You will be changing the number. Uh, for us, we, we increase till 20. This 20 number is, uh, will, will give you a shape, will give you a shape which may be, which is very uh, similar to the original uh, image. If you go, uh, if you stay to 15, for example, you will see some, uh, some images which are not uh, exactly similar to what you want. So we went to till uh, 20, but for other type of uh, fish, uh, some studies will show you that uh, they reach 10 or five, uh, but with the aprocomine flake kivu, the due to many variability at introspective level, so we increased till 20. So we did also some measurements on the major cusp on, and on the minor cusp. Uh, to facilitate this work, uh, we did this on, uh, the, the, on our images. You see that we, we draw some lines here, here. Uh, this will show the width of uh, the major cusp. And this one also will show the width of the minor cusp. Uh, this line, Anna, uh, uh, this line will show uh, the head of the major cusp. This also will show the head of the minor cusp. So for our analysis, uh, uh, the tooth contour were traced using the chain codo module of the shape software package. So this, uh, this uh, software shape, code shape, involve uh, many modules. Uh, 
you have, for example, the principal component module of the shape package, and then that will give you elliptic Fourier coefficient. This elliptic Fourier coefficient uh, will be very useful. Then uh, the data that we get there will be uploaded in a, in a past software also, where we'll be able to perform a parallel comparison using a non-parametric maneuver. So as a result, uh, this, this, this figure, uh, number six, uh, showed you uh, the external teeth morphology, how the teeth looks like. The first one is for Aprocomis and Sidae. The second one is uh, for Aprocomis Astatodon. And the last one is for Aprocomis Kamianzovu. If you look very well, you see that uh, for Aprocomis and Sidae, there are bicuspid. Uh, uh, you have one cusp here, another cusp, a, a cusp here, another cusp. The major cusp, minor cusp, major cusp, minor cusp. For uh, astatodon, we have also a teeth with a, a, a bicuspid, one and two, but you have also another, uh, other individuals with one uh, cusp, unicuspid or monocuspid. For Aprocomis uh, Kamianzovu, you have uh, two, uh, two, they are bicuspid. But you have also uh, for other specimens with three, uh, three cuspid, three cuspid, you see here, one, two, and three. So uh, this will bring uh, another uh, problem in the, in the running the, the software because we have too much of uh, a variation at intraspecific level. Uh, but when you look at the cutting edge form, formed by the enamel of the major cusp for NCD, uh, it's oblique, but here it's very oblique and elongated, uh, oblique and elongated, but for uh, uh, Kamianzovu, uh, it is right, right straight, like um, uh, 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 it's pointed. You see here, even here. So this was uh, our first result to the, um, the external teeth morphology or, uh, of our free species. So we look at also the teeth, the tooth shape in morphospace how they look like. Uh, I can cook and really can Well, here uh, you have, uh, we compute uh, from, the, from the data that we received um, uh, the, from, uh, from uh, our elliptic Fourier uh, coefficient, we put them, I told you that we put them in past software and we compute the principal component uh, one versus principal component two. So we will see uh, those uh, shape, teeth shape of the free species separated. Here we have in ready, uh, a Procomis astatodon. In the middle, we have a Procomis ncdae. And here we have a Procomis in green, uh, Aprocomis Kamianzovo. Uh, I think it's clear. You can see it. So here uh, we demonstrate that they are different. Even if uh, Aprocomis and Sidae and Aprocomis uh, uh, Kamianzovo are somehow or similar morphologically and uh, according also to the teeth, mm, uh, some of them may have. Uh, a shape similar to the other species, but here we demonstrate that uh, by uh, computing this uh, uh, shape software, we could separate them uh, completely. And also, uh, we cannot confuse them with the Aprocomis uh, astatodon, which is in ready. 
the red one is totally separated of uh, Aprocomis and Sidae. The another figure here, a uh, very important. Uh, this is a PCA uh, reconstructed outline from the elliptic Fourier descriptor that visualize the outline reflecting the mean shape. Here, uh, this, uh, this is the outcome, in fact, of our tooth shape analysis uh, from the software that we computed, uh, tooth shape. Um, uh, it will present those measure cusp in simple-imposed way. Uh, if we simply impose the measure cusp of Aprocomis Kamianzovu to the one of Aprocomis Sensidei and the third Aprocomis Astatodo. Here we will see the, the software will show us that the measure cusp of Astatodo is elongated comparatively to the one of Aprocomis Sensidei and also the cusp, the measure cusp of Aprocomis Sensidei is also. Uh, uh, elongated uh, uh, comparativity to the one of Aprocomis Kamianzovu. Uh, you remember that uh, we did also some measurements, some measurements of uh, the measure CASP and the minor CASP. All those data were put in a, in a past software and we plotted uh, the width of the um, the measure cusp and uh, the head of the uh, the measure cusp. So this is what we obtained. Here you have in ready you have uh, aprocomis astatodon. In the middle we have aprocomis ensidei, and here you have aprocomis kamianzovu. So at a certain uh, measurements of the width and head. Uh, they are totally separated. So as a discussion, the diagnosis value of tooth shape in the identification of lake Kivu specimen was uh, also determined by species specific differences in tooth shape. These results agree with uh, the findings of Stoffer and the others who reported that tooth shape was one of the morphological character used to define the genus Metriaclama and to discern between indigenous Oreochromis hunteri and the recently introduced Oreochromis karungwe in the crater Lake Chala in East Africa. The PCA reconstructed outline from elliptic Fourier descriptor showed that the head of the measure cusp were the key component in differentiation of the free uh, studies species, as reported by Carlos and others. It is evident that the use of Fourier coefficient yield a number of character that could never been uh, that could never have been achieved by a purely qualitative description of form as observed in the previous study. The tooth shape showed that bicuspid teeth almost differentiated the free species. These results also confirmed that the tooth shape is a species specific trait. Regarding the sexual differences, sexual differences in the tooth shape at the intraspecific level existed only in Aprocomis and Sidae in the free studied species. A similar sexual differences in the outer tooth shape has been reported for Aprocomis travo josephi, a species from Jordan Lake, in which adult male had conical and female had bicuspid teeth. Similar differences were observed in the Aprocomis Magalopos in Lake Mwanza Gulf. In Lake Kivu, sexual uh, dimorphism in tooth shape was reported previously only in Aprocomis glacilio and in Aprocomis groweri, 
which were among 12 of the 15 described aprocomine by Joss Knox. For both aprocomis gracio and the aprocomis roeli, it was observed that the occurrence of uh, unicaspid teeth was more abundant in males than in females. The same author did not uh, observe any sexual dimorphism related to the tooth shape in Aprocomis kamianzovu and Aprocomis astatodon. And this agree with our results, no information regarding tooth shape dimorphism in Aprocomis and was provided by the same author. Tooth shape in Aprocomis and was associated with geographical differences and, uh, and not with uh, habitat differences. The results indicate that tooth shape variation of Aprocomis and Sidae is influenced by geographical distance, suggesting that gene flow may be limited from south to north of the lake or vice versa. Similar results in the Arctic of Fox, Vilpas, Alopex, uh, Lagopus showed that tooth shape was significantly correlated with geographical distance. Mm -hmm. Tooth shape similarity of Aprocomis Kamianzovu and NCD in pelagic zone suggested that food item consumed by these Aprocomine species were the same. Similar diet induce, induces similar tooth shape, and this has been reported in other vertebrate study. Tooth shape differences observed in the Aprocomis and from Litro South versus Litro North might be linked to its gender differences between male and female individuals. It is known that during spawning period, teeth of male may become larger than the ones of female as a tools used in territorial to protect the nets. Differences of dental morphology in secrets have usually been correlated with dietary and behavioral differences, but not with geographical distance. In the case of uh, Aprocomis and Sidae, of uh, a species of our study, Lekivu, tooth shape may be adapted to the regional differences of the Lake Kivu, south versus north, as a food for fish proved to be different between southern and northern part of the Lake Kivu in terms of uh, food availability of diatomes, uh, cyanobacteria that was uh, studied by Isumbisho, Sarmento, and the sea. Apparently, one might think that Population of Aprocomis and Sidae in the south were isolated for, uh, by a ba uh, physical barrier to gene flow. The only uh, physical barrier existing in the Lake Kivu could be the deeply, deeply cut vegetative base found along the shoreline from south to the north. Further research will enable us to our understanding on the genetic control of tooth shape differences between southern and northern population of Aprocomis and Sidae. While tooth shape in the Aprocomis Kamenzovu was neither linked to the habitat nor geographical differences, it is suggested that selective pressure on its tooth shape might be minimal when diet was not significantly different. Tooth variation, tooth shape variation, was also observed at interspecific level. This suggests that variation in size and shape of teeth uh, among these um, aprocomine species may be due to the differences in foraging uh, strategies. This finding is similar to that uh, of Cochet, who observed that tooth morphology was highly correlated with the feeding, feeding ecology of cichlids fishes. Size of the major cusp in the free species was observed to be species specific also. This research 
uh, suggests that CASP morphology as well as CASP number, topology and uh, orientation are species specific traits as was uh, previously noticed in different vertebrates. Size of the major CASP in the free species uh, was found to be dimorphic. Male individuals, fish, uh, were found to have a larger measure cusp than female fish. These results are similar to the ones found with uh, each of the breeding habitats of uh, Eritimodi tribe, where male individuals has longer teeth than female. Species specific size of the measure cusp or the free species and the erosion showed taxonomic uh, significance of morphological differences that support the idea of wood. The crown head and width differences observed between a little and versus pelagic as well as southern versus north uh, population of the Lake Kivu support the idea that tooth size tray is an adaptive response to environmental changes. They observe the tooth size changes suggest uh, the existence of phenotypic plasticity between Litro versus Pelagic and Southern versus Northern population as the food texture in those uh, habitat might be different than may contribute to the differences in cone cusp size. The major cusp of uh, Aprocomis uh, Kamianzovu and NCDA in both uh, region, south and north, was found to be higher in Litro than in the Pelagic zone. Similar results was observed in Aprocomis agent, coach in sandy, muddy, rocky habitat of the Lake Victoria, Uganda. The outro teeth were found to be relatively long cylinder in those uh, habitat. These uh, uh, shape and size teeth phenotype suggest species specific species differences in foraging behavior based on uh, available food resources in the lake uh, habitat. The results of this study suggest a resource partitioning between the three uh, studied Aprocoman species species as it was observed in other secrets. The species demarcation was noticed at the longest teeth. This result is similar to the finding of Dieleman, who demonstrated that Oreopomis subspecies differences were most pronounced in the longest teeth. As a conclusion, the patterns identified in this study give insight into evolutionary pathway of these Aprocoman species and suggest that they may reflect a genetic signal. The elliptic Fourier analysis results show that the free species can be distinguished quantitatively based on two full shape. All taxonomic features mentioned above should be considered to differentiate them when you are sampling or identifying these species. Further taxonomic revision, revision of the Lake Kivu Aprocomine could consider the two full shape analysis using elliptic Fourier approach to distinguish these species. The current study was the first to address the question of two shape analysis using elliptic Fourier analysis on the free Lake Kivu Aprocoman species. The cone size analysis revealed phenotypic variation of the studied Aprocoman. Further research should also focus on the genetic basis of the observed patterns of dental size as it relates to sexual dimorphism and should be associated with the habitat. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Felipe. This is a great presentation.
Uh, I have one question from the chat, and uh, I would like to invite others who may have questions or comment to write them in the chat or raise the hand so we give him or her the time to speak directly to the speaker. Joseline asked, thank you, Philippe, for the good work done. I would like to ask you if her procurement Chromis Kamilanzov is endemic to Rwanda. If yes, what do you think are the main threats to that species? Can you respond to that question, Dr. Philippe? Uh, thank you very much. Um, yes, you, you are interested with uh, Aprochromis Kamilanzov. Uh, also, there is the Aprochromis NCDA. As you have seen, uh, Aprocomis uh, Kamilanzovo uh, has uh, about 16% uh, in the catches uh, in the literal zone. But for Aprocomis NCDA, it has 0.01% 0, 0 in the catches. So the one who is uh, the, the Aprocomis NCDA is uh, highly uh, treated in the Lake Kivu. So, but what uh, they are endemic, that's true, because they are, we found them uh, only in the Lake Kivu. We cannot find them elsewhere, uh, only in Lake Kivu. So what, what I think are the main threat to that species, the main threat for this is, um, is the intensive agriculture, agriculture, uh, using pesticide um, in the, uh, to the watershed. For example, this is uh, Aprocomis Kamianzovu. It was uh, discovered for the first time by Professor Joss Snooks, who will come uh, probably uh, in the summer school. Uh, he discovered this species at the wetland of uh, Kamianzovu. You, you see the place? You may know the place, eh? uh, uh, but when I went there, he's the one uh, Joe Snooks who, who told me to go and uh, search this species. At that place, I passed the three days uh, uh, searching this uh, species. I couldn't find it, but I realized that to the watershed in that uh, wetland, people were cultivating uh, rice and uh, they were using pesticide, many fertilizer. Uh, those with erosion, they come to the Ambushua of the river, uh, uh, river Kamianzovu, where uh, the professor uh, found this uh, species for the first time. For, so for me, I didn't find this uh, Kamianzovu uh, there. Uh, uh, it was treated, in fact. Uh, uh, it, it, it doesn't exist there any uh, normal, but uh, it could escape and uh, invaded uh, other places in the lake. We can find it uh, to Nyamasheke, we can find it to Ruavu, uh, everywhere, uh, even to Rusizi, we can find it. But uh, in that place where it was found for the first time, I didn't see it probably even where they are using other pesticide, uh, we, cannot, we cannot find it. It is very sensible to the, this uh, fertilizer, pesticide and uh, erosions. Those uh, are main threats to that species. Even I have shown you other species currently that we cannot uh, found in Lake Kivu. Um, like uh, uh, Aprochromis crebridens, uh, 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 we cannot find it. Like uh, uh, Aprochromis olivasus, it is very difficult to find it. Many of them are treated. So I, I think um, uh, uh, Lake Kivu should be uh, co, uh, fisher, fisherman managers uh, should. Um, focus on Lake Kivu for its management, proper management, 
so that uh, we conserve uh, fish species there. For example, this one, Aprocomis ribescus, they have uh, only two specimens uh, at the uh, Royal Museum of Tervilen in the laboratory of Josnux. I have seen it, the two specimens. But during all my sampling campaign, I got only one specimen. It is very a very nice uh, specimen because it is ready with a uh, red color. We we can when you touch it, it's like uh, you touch uh, uh, blood. But in a few minutes, uh, some few minutes, uh, the red color will disappear. Will disappear. But uh, it is currently difficult to find it. It is very very rare. Not only Kamianzovu, as you are saying, there is also another species that uh, uh, it is difficult to get. This is uh, Aprocomis ocrutidens. ocrutidens. It's also uh, declining there. Uh, yeah. If there is another question. Hello. Yes. Yes, please. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, my name is uh, Antoine Saimana. Uh, okay. Thank yes. you, Philip, for the nice presentation. Uh, I have uh, uh, two questions. Uh, how do you think the uh, edge the can affect the shape, uh, the shape of the teeth for for the fish. The age. The, the age. Yes. Uh, if if age can affect the, the 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 shape of the teeth. And the second. Uh, is it possible for a curator? to make a difference directly, I say for those fish that you identified uh, immediately to say this is the, it's a, a, a propromis incidence or a propromis whatever like that. Is it possible for a data without using the shape of the teeth to identify those fishes? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prof, for your questions. Uh, first of all, the age. The age can, you ask if the age can affect the shape of the teeth. Sure. When um, uh, those uh, juvenile, the very small ones, they have um, similar uh, uh, tooth shape. Uh, when they are still young, they, um, uh, you cannot distinguish them. Even the identification key that uh, we use currently is the one uh, provided by Joe Snooks. He used only, uh, uh, he provided the identification key for adults. So the, the age can affect the tooth shape as because when the, the fish is growing, it is changing also its, um, its diet. When it is still young, it will eat, for example, phytoplankton or zooplankton, but when it will be growing, the, its diet will be more specialized. It will be specialized, for example, for phytoplankton, or it will be specialized for pisphorus, it will be specialized for uh, eating uh, parasites or eating um, uh, uh, other fish or eggs. Huh? So the, the shape of teeth will be changing according to the age. Uh, you see, uh, uh, very sure the age can affect the, the tooth shape. So, uh, for identifying uh, those aprocomines, do we have uh, to, to perform this uh, software? Uh, uh, so well, here, 
uh, doing a thesis, a PhD thesis, it is saying uh, you, you sh I should be able to convince an international uh, taxonomist. Otherwise, they put me down uh, for a very problematic uh, 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 study like um, a procomis uh, of Olekivu. Uh, uh, you, you remember that uh, this uh, great taxonomist, he did seven years. Uh, uh, he finished his thesis in, in, one, in 94, the, when he, he defended his thesis. But he got some uh, um, question, had questions on these three species, because in his thesis, he didn't show uh, some plots that would distinguish the, these species. So some of people were saying, ah, this may be a subspecies of this, or this may be a subspecies of the other, or they may be all uh, forming one species. He's even the one who suggested me this thesis. Eh? So, uh, so he wanted that he would resolve those problems of uh, taxonomy, uh, showing some uh, analysis, uh, demonstrating to the readers that those uh, species are totally different. But uh, uh, we, we should be acquainted only. We don't have to, to, to use this um, software. We have to be trained by uh, specialists. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way of uh, identifying is this, this uh, species, first, you look at uh, the body, general organization of the body. You look at the head. Mostly those heads are different, as uh, I have shown you. The profile of the head, uh, you look at uh, how the eye is approaching the, the, this line of the outline, uh, the profile of the head. Mm? You look at the lips, for example. Mm? Then you have a, a general idea where you can, uh, how if this can be a procomis, gracilio or broweri and so on so on. But the second step is uh, to look at the teeth. You open the mouth and you see how, how, how uh, teeth are organized, how the shape is of these uh, teeth. And then uh, you, you can even count how many, how many teeth to the upper jaw, the lower jaw, internal uh, rows, then you will have already an idea. So after that, you look at uh, the number of gill records. When you look at the gill records, ah, you should have already an idea where you are going. Huh? You have a, a, a precise a criteria uh, to diagnose this uh, aprocomine. You look at the head, how the head is organized. Huh? You look at inside how, how many teeth, uh, how is the shape. Then you look at the uh, number of gear acres. Uh, then you have uh, already an idea. You can even open the, the stomach and uh, uh, look at the intestine if it is elongated or short. Probably you found inside um, insects, probably you found uh, Morisivora, uh, Morisk, probably you found. Um, uh, other fishes. So already you have an idea. So when you go now in the laboratory, uh, you have uh, with you uh, your, the, an idea of, of uh, identification of that apocomine, then you started doing measurements. So you will do the measurements according to the uh, protocol given by uh, Joss Mux, and you look at the range. Do the head length uh, is this range, uh, range? Do the body depth is in this range? Do the um, codopedonc is in this range? Then we'll be able to say this is a procomis gracio, this is a procomis groweri, rebenskes, and so and so on. I, I have said that I, among the 15, 
uh, aprocomine, only aprocomis victatus. We cannot um, miss this one. Huh? Uh, it's, when you look at it, it's aprocomis victatus. No, no other things to look. Uh, it has a, a big mouth. Huh? Uh, it's ready to cook uh, as a fish. Huh? Uh, when you look at um, uh, aprocomis uh, crebridens, crebridens also is easy to identify, huh? uh, this one. And also aprocomis ocrutidens due to this uh, concavity above the eye. Uh, uh, probably also this uh, aprocomis ribenskens, uh, if he, you are you are lucky to cross it uh, with its color, uh, red color, like blood. Uh, uh, Olivasus also, it is easy, but others you will have to observe properly. So I have seen one of my colleagues sending me images. Uh, can we identify this? Ah, my friend, uh, we have to be careful when you are giving a name of a species, you should be, be closer to it. Look at the head, look at the mouth, count the number of teeth, look at the number of gear rakers, and so on, so on. Uh, sometimes open the, uh, the uh, digest tube, look at what say it, it, it can eat. So there are many factors that you can combine, but as you will be acquainted, you will be able to say, ah, this is a aprocomis kananzovu, this is a aprocomis astatodon, and so on, so on. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Tasia has another question, and he's wondering if you visited the Akajira River because aprocomis kananzovu used to arrive in, the, in that river. Uh, if you say that Aprocomis uh, 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 is found also in Akagera River. Excuse me. Uh, uh, yes. Bena? Yes. Yeah. yes that's that's speaking. Uh, I said uh, Akanyaru River, not Akagera. Akanyaru. In the uh, some researchers here in Rwanda found these Aprocomis Kamiranzovu in Akanyaru River. So, you may talk to Rashid Mimba and explore more fish diversity in Akanyaru River. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I'm very curious to see that is uh, uh, the specimen of uh, this uh, called uh, Procomis Kamianzov uh, uh, coach in Akanyaru. Because for me, I will take it and compare with the one of uh, the Lake Kivu, then make a comparison. If uh, I make a serious observation, uh, look at the shape of the teeth, uh, look at the number of the teeth, uh, look at uh, the number of gear workers, mm? uh, even making some measurements, if they, they are in the range of this one given by Joe Snooks, so otherwise, it may be another species. If uh, um, Joss Nux said that uh, uh, Procomis Kamianzovu is endemic to the Lake Kivu, if by radiation it comes to invade other uh, uh, water bodies, it's possible. But uh, we have to be careful and very make a serious study and confirm that we found also uh, a Procomis Kamianzovu in Akanya. Not saying like this, other taxonomists, uh, people who are doing taxonomy on aprocomines, I think they are very, uh, they, they confirm these uh, names uh, with um, much attention. Uh, uh, they consult themselves they consult the auto scientific auto uh, to make sure that uh, this uh, aprocomis kamianzovu uh, is also found in akanyaru i think uh, a, a paper should be uh, should be out uh, if uh, we found uh, aprocomis kamianzovu in akanyaru but um, if other taxonomists who are there who 
Is it just looks? I don't know. Is he? Uh, uh, Tasia was saying that maybe he's Lashi de Mwimba. He's another expert in the fishes and he, he also <laughs> gave me in the chat room the link for the data maybe. I can see the link from the Rwanda Biodiversity Information System and I'm going to put in the chat. Maybe there is some more information there. We can check it and know more about it. Oh. Uh, yes, I, Lina. Uh, yes, yes, can, yes, sir. yes. Please, I if you get this, this if you have uh, this specimen, eh? please don't take it only in your lab. Eh? Please uh, give me it uh, and uh, I make my analysis. Uh, um, uh, I observe. Mm -hmm. I use the method uh, of Joe Snooks. Mm -hmm. uh, I was trained by him. I, I worked on this Prokomis uh, Kamianzovu using also other methods of landmark landmark uh, based geometric morphometrics, and we can be very and also using this uh, tooth shape. Sincerely, we can be uh, able to confirm if it's uh, really a Prokomis Kamianzovu found in a Kanyaru. But uh, uh, if uh, you have uh, some taxonomist. Uh, a uh, readable taxonomist, okay, we can accept, but this should be out and be published. Yes, you are right. We have to cross check. Tasia, you have something to say. Please go. Yes, on. we don't have the specimen here in the center of excellence in biodiversity nature management, uh, but Rashidi is uh, working now, working from the from the Alcos, so maybe Dr. Felipe can contact him. From Alcos, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much, Tasia. It's better to cross check to see if they also went to Akanyaro. Who knows? That is possible. Yeah, we are 15 past four, and I think we can cross the session of today now. Thank you all who attended this session and great thanks to the speaker of today. You have a good research and uh, uh, this was very interesting to know uh, how tooth shapes and the size differ in those three species and also how sexual dimorphism occur. Yeah, that was very interesting to us and thank you very much for that uh, please uh, another thing uh, about this uh, aprocomis kamianzovu found in akanyaru mm. if they can get uh, at least 10 specimens mm -hmm. and uh, we mix them with uh, the one of lake kivu mm -hmm. then uh, we make analysis <laughs> together uh -huh. and uh, if uh, they show the same patterns then we can confirm that is a uh, Aprocomis uh, Kamianzovu. But if there are some discordance, uh, they are, uh, those of a Kanyaru escape for the, this morphospace that I have shown you, morphospace, mm -hmm. then we say it is another species. Yes, yes. you are right. And the, yeah, that's why seminars like those like this one are very important because people may discuss and the, there can be some unanswered question which can be tested after the seminar and the, know more about that and the, maybe Tassi also can continue to search or just if he get some specimens bring them in the lab and the, check the species and talk with Rashid just to get new information. Yeah, I'd like to invite someone also who may have another topic to share with us, please contact me. I cannot cross without saying that. Uh, I welcome everyone and I put him or her on the schedule to speak 
to us. We all grow together by running together. Thank you very much. This is the end of the today's session. Let's meet again next week on Wednesday, but it is important to inform you that next Wednesday, we will not have an online seminar like this. We will have a physical seminar and it will take place in Chigari, Nyarujenje campus, of course, Nya, uh, Universal of Rwanda Nyarujenje campus. And we will give you more details about that very soon. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Thank you. You're welcome.